Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do some watercolor pencil artwork, and I'm using these watercolor pencils from our sponsor, Arteza. They're a set of 24, they're very affordable, and they're woodless, meaning that everything you have, all the pencil is actually media. It's all stuff you can use up, so um, it's very economical, and the quality was pretty good. So, and we're also gonna be using their water brushes. These are, I just wanted to show you what they look like brand new in the packages. Um, but right here, you can see the swatches. This is just a little sketch I did with the pencils to try them out and they are a lot of fun to work with. Um, here you can see the colors. What I did was I scribbled them out in about half of a rectangle and then I just added water and pulled it out, pulled the rest of the pigment down. Uh, very easy to dissolve, very vibrant colors. I was very impressed because generally watercolor pencils, if they're not if, if they're on the cheap side, they are on the cheap side, but these are actually really nice. And I'll put a link in the video description so you can go check them out. They actually have a lot of other supplies in their shop too, and they're all way cheaper than what you'd pay at the craft store. So um, I just thought I'd share that with you today. So what I have done is I've just left my pencils in the little um, trays they come in, but you could, you know, put them in a tin or however you want, put them in a jar. Just remember that the that there's no wood protecting them, so you just want to make sure that you don't... Um, that you don't damage them. I also have a couple of rubber stamps here because I'm going to share a technique where we actually stamp with the watercolor pencils and we're going to do that on a mat that I've already cut. Um, but right now we're going to start with the sketch and we are going to be making a dragonfly. So I'm going to start off with this really really pale sky blue and I'm, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit for you so you can have that fill in your screen a little better. And I am going to sketch on the dragonfly and um, I like to put it a little bit off center and I know some of the wings are going to kind of come off the edge, but that's all right. I want to get, um, I, I don't mind if it's a little bit of a, like a portion of the picture, not the entire dragonfly. So, um, so that's why I'm doing that. I think it looks a little bit more pleasing when you've got like kind of a, a partial image. So this is the head, we've got the two segments of the body. This upper part of the body is what the wings are connected to. Now the other thing that's really nice about, like if you're sketching here, you might not have everything perfectly symmetrical. So if you are doing something kind of like having half of the picture off the page, it you don't have to be so perfect as far as getting everything lined up exactly and everything symmetrical. So that's another reason, since I'm not <clears throat> taking a lot of time sketching beforehand and transferring a pattern, I just wanted to have fun with these and get right to it. Um, I'm just going to go sketch right on my nice watercolor paper. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. Now a trick, if you have a hard time getting things symmetrical, something that I find that helps is to actually flip my paper over and draw the second side um, upside down. So instead of looking at the reference photo, I'm actually just looking at my, um, my opposite side. I'm just trying to match the shapes. And for me, that works really well. It's also really handy whenever you're drawing like vases or anything like that to, to use that trick. So I've got a basic, um, I get the basic shape here. So now I'm gonna go ahead and color in with some of the different colors. Now, when you're working with watercolor pencils, um, if you do intend on dissolving them, what I recommend doing is kind of coloring in little circles on their side. You don't wanna make really stiff lines on the paper because what happens is you end up indenting your paper and then, um, and then it doesn't want to dissolve so well for you. So just kind of keep that in mind. So I'm just kind of doing little circles, um, or like, almost like long ovals, like actually, uh, softly with a pencil. So I'm not pressing down very hard and I'm getting all that pigment. So that's kind of a mark of a, of a good quality pencil. The other thing I want to mention is that it doesn't take a lot of pressure to put down these colors. So if you've been wanting to use colored pencils, but maybe you have arthritis or other strength issues in your hands and you've had a hard time using pencils, you're not going to have a hard time with this. Um, and also the water brushes that I'm going to show you are very easy to squeeze. I know some people have had troubles with their uh, water brushes being difficult to squeeze. So that's another thing that's nice about this. Um, so I'm going to grab this darker brown here and I'm just going to go in. Now here, there are these little um, kind of like segments in the body, kind of around where the wings attach. So I am kind of pushing a little bit with my pencil because I don't care. I, I don't, it, it's not going to bother me if they all don't dissolve because that's actually giving me some structure in my sketch. So anytime you do want some of the lines to remain, um, you just want to press a little bit firmer here. So I like to, you know, maybe accent these uh, eye areas. We're looking at the back of the dragonfly, so we're not seeing the eye, but we are seeing those kind of sections that they have. 
Put a little bit of that in there. So I find there's a really good range of color, and since they are water soluble and you can mix them easily, you don't need to have, you know, 72 of them. It works really well, I think. I want to fill in the color here on the uh, bottom part of the body. And I think I will, I'm gonna look at my um, my little color key here that I made. I like that color, it was just called plain blue. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit of that into the wings here and there and into the body. So maybe add that line. Now I can go in, like if I decide I want a really hard line, um, after it's wet and it's still, it's still damp and I've wet it, I can go back in with a sharpened pencil or a pencil with a good edge on it and I can actually go in and make those lines again and then they will not dissolve if I go on, on damp paper. So there's a little something to, uh, to kind of keep in mind as you're working. Like if I want to get the like details in the wings, um, any of those like little cells or veins, if I did that at, when it was damp, after I like uh, liquefied my first row of color, then I can do that and, and get and retain some of that color. I'm just putting a very little bit of um, pigment in the wings because what I think I'll end up doing is using my pencils, kind of like a watercolor pan, and uh, picking up pigment for that for the most part. And I'm just kind of thinking if I want a little bit, maybe a little bit of a warmer yellow in some of the body here. And maybe a little bit more of that lighter brown in the eyes. So I think these would be really great if you're thinking about uh, getting started in watercolor pencils but you don't want to invest a ton of money. Um, I think it's a really great, uh, really great thing to uh, to try. Now I feel like the, the dragonfly should be on something and um, it, the reference photo I have, it's kind of like on the end of a stick and I don't really like that. So I think what I want to do is put like maybe a blade of grass and that will help guide the eye through the picture. Maybe put a couple other little blades of grass in here as well. So when you're using a reference photo, don't limit yourself to just what the reference photo is showing you. Go ahead and, and uh, add more to it if you want to. It's your artwork. You don't have to follow anything. Absolutely. You don't have to follow what I'm doing. Absolutely. You do what you want to do. So um, these water brushes, you get three round ones and three flat ones in a pack and um, not very expensive. I oh, I think it's about $10, but don't quote me on that. I will uh, put all that information in the video description. Uh, so you have six different sizes, which is really handy. Um, I think that for working on the dragonfly body, you're going to want either the smaller or the medium size. Now, um, keep in mind that these water brushes are very easy to squeeze, but it's really easy to go overboard. If you give it a little squirt, you're going to get a little drop of water. That's perfect. If you give it a big squirt, look, it's gonna, you're going to get a lot of water out, which is great for background wash, but not when you're going into a small area. So these are the easiest to squeeze brushes that I have used. Just keep in mind that um, the where you're coloring, you might not want a huge flow of water. Um, squeeze hard if you're doing a background and you want a lot of washy water, but if you're just working in a small area, give it a gentle, gentle squeeze. And you know, you can always do it on a plate or over your hand, something like that, so you don't end up with too much water on your, um, on your paper. Now, a lot of times with watercolor pencils, if you are, like I need more water, so I'm gonna give it a little squeeze there. Um, a lot of times with watercolor pencils, if you, um, are liquefying them, a water brush doesn't quite cut it. You need something that's a little firmer with less water, but I find that these liquefied really well. Now remember, I don't have a lot of water on the, uh, a lot of pigment on the wings. Remember we just did really light because I wanted to show you another technique. And I, the reason I skipped over here instead I kept, keep working on the body is because um, I wanted to, I had already had that color blue on my brush, so I figured I would just go ahead and, and start right in there. Okay, so now because I want to color, I add some more color to the wings but not have it super bright, what I'm going to do is, um, is pick up some color with my brush. Now when you want to clean your brush, a little squeeze, wipe it on a towel, that's all you need to do. Or a rag, paper towel, your pants, whatever, it doesn't really matter. I want to have maybe some pretty like purple colors in here, so what you want to do is use your stick of color kind of like a, a watercolor pan. Now these are varnished on the sides, so if I put my brush here, I'm not going to get pigment, but if I go where it's sharpened, I will. Um, because 
this is all like really good pigment. Um, if you do decide to sharpen your pencils so that you can get a nice point, save your shavings. Keep like a, a watercolor palette or a little uh, pill box or something handy so you can put those shavings uh, in there and use them again when you need that color. When you're like you're doing a background, you can use it just like uh, watercolor paints in a pan so you don't want to waste that so keep that in mind so again I want a little bit of this color so I'm going to pick that up from the sharpened area and you can see on the tip of the brush how it's coming over and I can go in and add that in where I want it so I like this technique if I'm doing something translucent like if I was doing uh, well, you know, like insect wings, or if I was doing like a glass bottle or something where I really wanted to have a smooth, transparent look, this is the best way to uh, to get that effect. Now for the wings, there's a couple different techniques that we can do here. I could go right in with the, um, with the pencil, and I'll show you that in a couple areas. Um, it's going to be really dark. Okay, look at that. See that I did that little, uh, these a couple little really dark areas in the wing. Look how dark that is. It's not really practical to do that everywhere, or I'm going to end up with way more, um, way more dark than I want. So what I'm going to do instead is grab my trusty credit card scraper. And so what I do is I save old gift cards, and I just uh, cut them up small, and then I can use these on my in my artwork to make those really fine lines, like veins on flowers, or these lines in the dragonflies. Um, wings and that way I don't end up getting in over my head with more lines than I know what to do with because sometimes it can look even though you know there's like thousands of little like veins in the wings if you paint them all it looks really fake because our eyes don't see that if we're out like say we're out canoeing and a dragonfly lands on our arm we don't see all of those shapes we only see maybe a couple little details and the rest is all is all kind of fuzzy so because that's how we perceive it if we go and we paint every little detail because we can see it in a photograph it starts to look really fake so um so that would be my advice for doing something like that just don't don't paint every little detail in and uh and use your credit card scraper because it just gives you a much nicer look so there that's really all i'm going to do to that wing i think it's really all i need for details but if you felt like you wanted a few you're going to connect a few of the cells or something you can do that but just try not to overdo it because you know it starts to look a little fake you do need to be kind of decisive and do it right then while the um you know while the wing is wet but uh but just try not to overdo it. It's it's one of those things you kind of get it. It's kind of now or never. You got to do it when you know when it's wet. But um, generally, generally it's best not to overdo it. When in doubt, leave it out for details. I think. So I'm going to do the same exact technique on these other three wings, and then we're going to come back and work on the body some more. All right, I did the other three wings, just like the first one, very quick and easy. And the next thing I'm going to do is liquefy the paint on the body, still using that small brush. Now, um, if you want to clean your brush, like I mentioned before, squeeze it and wipe it. And then if you feel like uh, you have too much water on your brush, you can always blot it off at any time. Um, I don't find this feeds too much water on its own unless you squeeze it, so you should be able to control the amount of water in your brush. But if you find that um, you just want a drier brush or you want a firmer brush, you can always go ahead and look at whatever brushes you have from other painting and use that. I know like small flat acrylic brushes work really well when you're using watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons because they don't hold a ton of water and they tend to push the pigment around. Uh, so experiment and find exactly what right for your style of painting. At this point I pretty much just want to make sure everything is um, is liquefied. They don't have any granular bits of color uh, like here where I've got the uh, edge of the wing kind of meeting the body. I want to go in and kind of push pigment up there so it's uh, it's matching up and now I want to take a second and think about what I want to do in the background. These are the flat sizes that come in that uh, water brush kit by the way I just double checked and these are on sale today for under nine bucks a set so I don't know how long that sale is good for but I did just pop over there and check um, the benefit of having a flat brush is that it's just it's wider and it's going to cover more area so I decided that I'm just going to go ahead and wet the entire background and um, and that will help me kind of fade this kind of in the background I don't know if I want all those um, 
if I want all of those blades of grass to be bright and distinct or not. So by kind of fading it out at this point, I can decide that later. And I really like that I can get a lot of color, a lot of, um, sorry, water out with this brush because it makes doing backgrounds a lot easier. A lot of times with water brushes, I feel like I have to, you know, really forcefully squeeze and, uh, and I still don't get that much water out. Um, because you can get more water out at once, that means you probably will need to refill your brush more often. And what I do is I save the little, uh, those little flavor drink things. Um, you can get them like Kool-Aid or Mio, or it's all kinds of different brands, but they're basically a tiny little like sugar-free water enhancer thing. Well, once it's empty, I just fill that with water and I can squirt it right in here to fill up my water brush. So that works out really well for me. Um, so if you happen to use that product, I would just save the empty containers. You can want pop off the top and wash them and they're just perfect for filling water brushes. I like my backgrounds to be, um, have a little bit of interest and texture. So what I'm going to do is look at colors I've already used and see if there's any I can incorporate into the background to make it look uh, a little more interesting. So I think I'm going to grab some of this, uh, some of this blue and I'm going to flick it on. So I like to load up my brush and then I'll just go in and flick it. I think it adds just a really fun, a uh, fun texture and some of it's going to wick out and I'm going to get some cool um, cool texture that way and I can even throw in like maybe some little grasses and then I can go in because the paper is damp remember I can go in with this light green that I've already used and I can go in and sketch some and these would just be kind of like just some background elements of course, this is funny because now that I think about it, before I said I didn't like that branch, but now that I'm thinking about it, I actually kind of do like the branch, but not a straight up branch like there was in my reference photo. I think I'm going to make a branch and have it kind of come across like that. Or maybe it's a grain of wheat. I'm not sure exactly, but I felt like I wanted something a little more um, substantial. There, so I gave him a little, there's like a stick here. Maybe I'll put a couple little branches off. I don't know what kind of branch this is. Maybe it'll come to me. Maybe I'll think of something. There, that, that gives us a little more interest in the painting and, uh, and it was fun to make. And I like that. I feel, I actually feel like I would like a little bit more color. I'm going to grab this color because I've already used it. I'm going to grab a different brush and liquefy some of that. While the paper's wet, you have a lot of flexibility as to what you can do with it. Um, if your paper's wet, your colors will blend. Just kind of keep that in mind. I always like to do yellows close to the top of the paper because it kind of gives me the feeling that there is some sunshine. And if I do some more blue in here, that will give me the feeling that, oh, maybe there's some water. Maybe there's like a, a stream or something. The Dragonfly is just kind of hanging out around. Let me go back to this big brush, which already has some blue on it. The background, you know, it's out of focus. It's kind of far away, so I, I don't have to paint anything really specific. I just need to get that kind of vibe in there. So at this point, we want this to dry, and then we can go on top and add some detail. I wanted to share this really quick. As my painting was drying here, uh, knowing that I wanted to use some details, use some brown, a couple shades of brown for some details, um, I decided to sharpen these. But what I did was I sharpened them here in this watercolor palette, added a little bit of water, and I'm going to let that harden. And now I'm going to have a matching watercolor palette to go with my pencils. So um, the benefit of this over the wooden encased pencils is that you don't waste anything. If you need to sharpen it, put it in a palette and save it. I used to like never want to sharpen my wooden pencils or I'd use a knife just to get the wood off and leave the um, the core intact, but I never work with a super sharp pencil because I didn't want to waste the, um, the art media. So here I don't have to worry about that. I can put it in my um, my extra watercolor palette or a pill box or fish and tackle box, whatever you have, egg carton, doesn't matter, um, ice cube tray, and you can save it for future use. So I just wanted to share that with you so um, you can also you know, conserve your materials. So what we're going to do here is use our browns. And I've got this, uh, this one called brown is like really, really dark. I'm going to use this first 
and I'm going to define some areas. Now, I find oftentimes a watercolor pencil will feel a little more dry when you go to, to sketch with it versus like a wax based color pencil which might feel a little more creamy but these are these are plenty soft to leave plenty of um, pigment down without adding a ton of uh, pressure which again I think is really nice if you have any issues as far as like arthritis or you have a hard time you know pressing the pencil enough to get a line as dark now I do have a decent, I, I usually do have a firm grip, I always have a firm grip when I write, so uh, keep that in mind. Your results might vary, but I haven't snapped the pencil, so I think that's, that's pretty good. I don't want to go in and put too many details, because like I mentioned before, I don't want to have every single um, detail mapped out, because it can look fake when, you, when you're working on something like, a, you know, something you never really see the details in, in real life. And again, just try to like mirror it on the opposite side so it doesn't look um, off balance. And I like to go in with these darks first just because it, um, it, it helps me establish value and figure out exactly where I want everything. So I want to get uh, some dark in here between the eyes or the back of the eyes, these sections. It's almost like um, like a, a suit of armor, you know, you have all these different like sections of of like uh, plates. I'm not a, uh, a, I don't know what you call them, insect studier. <laughs> so um, I'm sure this isn't going to be absolutely accurate. And I like that I can add this color down here. Um, I'm not, I don't want to outline it all because it's going to look kind of cartoony, but I do want to kind of come down and get the darks in that I see. I will be adding some more of that blue that we added, remember, into our wet uh, paint, uh, pencil, our wet paper. But I just want to kind of get some of that in there right now with that brown uh, because it's just going to temper it a little bit, not make it seem so bright blue. And I'm going to go in with this medium brown. This one's called T. They all have names. Um, some of the names I don't think accurately reflect the color though, so that's why I didn't really go by the names. I don't know if they, if some of the names were misprinted on the set that I have or if it's just what they decided to call some of these colors, but like their magenta doesn't look very magenta to me and their vermilion looks more magenta to me. So I think there might have been like a misprint or you know what they what they decided to color the the names just isn't what I would have what what you know I would be used to seeing and I think what I'm probably going to end up doing is leaving the the coloring with on the body kind of alone and maybe adding a little bit of water to the uh, to the coloring in the wings. Cause I want that to be, I'm, I colored really firm on, firmly on the body so I do get that smooth look but in the wings I didn't want to put it so dark so it got a little more granular looking as it caught the texture of the paper. This is a like a regular watercolor paper, regular cold press watercolor paper so I'm not going to be, you know, it's not going to be super smooth and then I can just pull some of those, some of those lines out. Now this is where it's handy to have your watercolor palette uh, with the dried uh, not dried with the shavings because I can go in with this brush. I could put, I could pick up a little bit if I want to do a detail. Look at that! I can get that really fine line with my brush. And since I'm more used to using brushes than um, than pencils, it can be very advantageous for me to do that. And plus, you know, I just love the no waste factor. You can put in as many details as you like, and you can go in and add to the little branch there. You could add a little shimmer on the wings if you want. I might do that. I haven't decided. But just kind of have fun with it and, and just play. 
Um, I'm gonna let this dry for now. Um, I'm gonna think about adding shimmer to the wings, but for right now, I'm gonna leave it as is because I think it looks pretty fairly well done. And I wanna show you the technique on the matte board. So uh, you can do this technique on greeting cards, uh, anything you like, but I just thought it'd be kind of nice to do this here on the matte board since, you know, we can make something that will coordinate. And I've got a couple of rubber stamps here. I've got uh, some leaves and I've got some lupin. And I thought there were a lot of different colors here that would work really well for this technique. So what I like to do is actually wet my stamp and this water brush is really good for that. Um, because we're not using ink and we've got those dry pencils, we gotta moisten it somehow. And I just find this is probably the best way to control that water a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna use a couple colors. I definitely want to use some of the colors I've used already and I'm using the edge and I'm just kind of coloring on the rubber there. I'm going to grab some of this lighter pink. I'm going to grab some of the darker purple. And that looks pretty good. You just have to kind of tip it to the light, make sure you've got color everywhere you want color. Otherwise, it might not really show up very well. Throw a little bit of that uh, violet blue. Now, the other thing you could do is you could dip it in some water. I just dipped that in some water off camera, and you could go in that way. Um, I find that brushing it with the um, brushing it with a brush just to helps you not get too much. And you can sometimes get like two impressions off of that, but doesn't that look pretty? Wouldn't that be pretty on like a card? I just love it. So I'm gonna do that a couple more times. Um, I think this time I will actually, I will actually dip the, dip the, dip the crayon in my water really quickly. You don't want to like accidentally leave it in your water or it will dissolve because <laughs> we've seen how easily this dissolves. So don't leave it in your water. It's a quick dip and that's it. Another thing you can do, I just got to move my, my uh, thing out of the way. You can lightly mist it with a, uh, with a spray bottle. I find that like the little crafter ones work better than the big <laughs> mister that I had there just because you don't get too much. So um, that's another thing that you can do. So brush, mist, dip it in the water, doesn't really matter. However, it works best for your technique. I do think just brushing the water on is probably the, the best as far as like not messing up and getting too much media on there. But if it dries on you or you are adding a new color and it doesn't seem to be coming off, then you know, go ahead and dip it. And I'm gonna get this corner over here and then just stamp it again right there. So I've got this, these beautiful lupins. I love the look of that. And now I wanna add some green foliage. So I've got this stamp here, which I think is nice for that. And I'm again going to wet the rubber. I guess I probably just didn't wanna dirty my brush again. That's probably why I, I decided to miss it last time because I don't want to be spending my time cleaning brushes, jeez. <laughs> now I could actually go in and color or even use a wet brush. I'll just show you real quick. Um, let me clean off this brush I've been using. Oh heck, let me use a different size. So you can see this is the medium size one. I can go in and I can like spread some of that color around while it's still wet if I want to. So that's another really fun technique. I really like this for card making. Um, it's really great, especially if you've just gotten into like rubber stamping and you don't have a lot of uh, supplies yet and of course I can go and pick up some of this and bring it over and you know you can do this with uh, with watercolor crayons water soluble oil pastels too if that's what you have but I was just trying to show you a few different ways to use these um, okay so back to this one we're gonna use some shades of green so oh this one is covering really well because there's a lot of texture on that stamp so it's really grabbing it well this color here i think it's it's called tawny we use this um for uh for part of our original coloring original sketch i thought that was a really nice color and it helps temper down some of those brighter greens the, the set comes with a couple it comes with like three greens and they're all really really vibrant almost acidy greens so by adding a warm yellow to that like that tawny or the uh the other warmer yellow that's a little brighter it'll help temper that so you don't get you know too crazy crazy green in there now sometimes you will want to mist your stamp like if i stamp it and it's not like really uh really well that transferred all right but say it didn't transfer really that well i could mist it at that point and then it would help whatever pigment is left transfer over onto my mat but i'm not really having any trouble with that so that's good 
So I'll just go in. I'm really liking this technique. I have to say, I find the round brushes to be a lot more useful than the flats, except for this technique. This technique is definitely a lot easier to do with the flats. I also like to keep a, a few water brushes in my like traveling craft bag, like if I go to a scrapbooking crop. Um, because, and I also like to keep some watercolor pencils in my bag too because they're just super versatile. I can use it to like change a color of my cardstock or change the color of the edge on one of my papers if I need like a mat of a certain color and I didn't have it. Um, it's just a super, super versatile supply to have. I think I want these to go that way. A uh, good technique is to turn your stamp so that you're always getting a slightly different um, uh, different look. And like if I saw these were really green, I think I'll grab more yellow this time. And that will just give you that natural variance that you see um, in nature. I'm going to just get the tip of that one. And maybe I'll just get try to get these two, those two leaves right there. And there we go. So that was pretty easy. We've got a mat, which I think is really pretty. And you could always use ink and over stamp like some text or something like that. Whatever you feel like your picture needs. Everyone's going to be a little different. And then I could put that on there. And we have a pretty little scene. And I like to make my, my picture a little bit bigger than the mat. I can move it around a little bit and decide exactly how I want to crop it. But I think that is a really fun little project that you can do with watercolor pencils or watercolor crayons and um, stamps and you know water brushes. And these are the Arteza watercolor woodless watercolor pencils. I did double check. They are on sale right now for $19.99. So less than a buck a pencil and it's all product you can use. Um, it is a little more difficult to do the stampy technique with traditional color pencil watercolor pencils because you can't you, you don't have that much surface area of the lead to to coat it so um so if you don't have these you know you could always try a watercolor crayon or something or you could use a brush to lift up watercolor paint and, and ink up your stamps because i'm all about using what you have but if you have been looking for watercolor pencils and um and a bargain i would say give these a try i want to thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up and if you're not already a subscriber hit that subscribe button i'd love to have you thanks so much for watching until next time happy crafting.